Okay, a parallel rod BA has of length 4L has one end B fixed to a horizontal surface with the other end A vertically above B. Okay, the ends of the light inextensible string of length 4L are fixed to A and to a point C, a distance 2L below A on the rod. Okie dokie. So what does that mean? That means that's 2L, doesn't it? How do I know that's 2L? Says in the question, doesn't it? 2L right there. Now, does it say this has to be in the middle? Yeah. Where does it say it has to be in the middle? Midpoint. And what's what's the what's the midway point of the uh, hot paper guys? Yeah. What's the midpoint of this guys? Two L's. Yeah. So what type of triangle does that make that? Equilateral. So we're talking about sixties here, aren't we? Okay. Make it the last one. Now, what can we say about the? Uh, we're just going to break it up into T1 and T2. Why is there two different tensions? Two different strings. Huh? Two different strings. Two different strings. Okay, so we're just going to break this up a little bit, like so. Okay, we have T1 and T2. It's the same string. Uh, so where to say that? Both parts of the string. Both parts of the string. Written poorly, but two different tensions. Both parts of the string. I'm also looking at the marking scale. You're going to accept me. <laughs> okay. So T1 and T2. Okay. Now, MG. Straight down. Okay, and uh, then we're going to do the forces up versus forces down. Okay, so what can we say about this one here? That's 60 degrees, isn't it? So we call that T1 cos 60. What's T1 cos 60? Well, it's a half T1. Okay, uh, this one here, root 3 over 2 T1 going to the left. What about T2? If that's also 60, a half, T2, except the tension is going which way? That'll be going downwards, while this one's going upwards. And then what about the uh, the middle line there? That'd be another root 3. Root 3 over 2, T2. Okay, uh, up versus down, guys. So what's going up? Huh? A half? T1. Okay. What's going left? I oh, said, what's going down? Plus a uh, half T2, is it? Okay. That's our up versus down formula. Okay. What's the next formula we have to do? FC, which one is it? Is it MV squared over R? Or are we going to use m or omega squared? It says in the question, doesn't it? Gives you a hint. Okay. Now, what's going? What forces are going towards the centre of the circle? So if this is an ellipse here. What forces are going towards the centre? I'd say you have your root three over two. T one plus your root three over two. Equal to your um, Do we have an R value? Not yet, but we can try and find one in a second. Okay, we'll just pause for a second. I'm going to have to get rid of R. Too many variables. Okay. Now I think I can get rid of the. I can think I can get. I think I can isolate T1 plus T2 there, can't I? So I have two equations. I'm going to work on this one. And I think. Actually, I can't isolate T1 and T2. 
I'm just going to have to get rid of one of them at a time, am I? So maybe, maybe just get T2 on its own because it's easy there. So I have T1, so we're just going to do root 3 over 2. Multiply the other side by 2. So would everybody agree that T1 equals uh, 2mg? Plus T2. Plus T2, exactly. Okay, just quickly adjust that. So what, can I replace that with root 3 over 2, 2mg, plus T2. Now at this point in time, I'll reread the question and figure out what exactly it wants me to do. Okay, what does it want from me? Tension in each string. So I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the right route, T2 followed by T1. Okay, now what do I have here? Find the order. Huh? Find the order. Yeah, I could do a find an R, right? And it says in terms of M as well, so I don't necessarily need to get rid of M either, do I? All right, and it and what? Uh, who said find R? What Callum said is correct. It doesn't allow R in the equation. It only allows L. So I'm going to change my R to an L somehow. So I come back to the top, and what I realise is that's two L. This here is R. So what can I do there, guys? What do you think? Sine 60 equals R over. 2L, R equals 2L, sine 60, sine 60 is root 3 over 2, so R equals root 3, L. That's just conforming with the question to change the R into the L. Okay, so root 3 L. So <coughs> M times root 3 L times omega squared. Factorize out the T2 maybe. Actually not what yet, sorry, one second. Root 3 MG. Give me a sec. Oh yeah. Okay, we cancel all the root trees. I'll just get rid of them. Like they're not here. And then the other one. Okay. Half T two plus a half T two. T two. ML omega squared minus MG. We're good. Okay, find T1. We have something for T1 up here, don't we? T1 equals 2MG plus T2. So T1 equals 2MG plus T2. So T1 is just an extra 2MG at the added on to the end, <coughs> which will get us what, guys? ML omega squared plus mg. Uh, that went for 20 marks. Okay? And now we're on our final two. So this is a 30 mark question, okay? So what do you ask them what's next? At a given instant, both parts of the string are cut. They're both cut at the same time. Find the time in terms of L which elapses before the mass strikes the horizontal surface. Okay, the mass strikes. Okay, how far above the ground is it? 3L above the ground, isn't it? And it says in terms of L. Does it matter how fast it gets, if it gets flung out? So as an example, if you, have a, if you have a bullet that's going this way, and there's no air resistance or nothing like that, it still drops down at gravity. Would you agree with that? If you drop a ball straight down, it still drops at the acceleration due to gravity. So it has nothing to do with the last question whatsoever, really. It's just your U, it's your U vast. Your U value is zero when you're talking about up versus down. It has a speed going laterally, but it hasn't got a speed going up and down. Your V, you don't know. Your A is what? Gravity. Your S value? 3L. Three. Three Come. It is, but we're not asked about how much distance it covers in the SX direction. We're only asked about SY. So we're only asked about how, how, how much time does it spend in the air. So that's just a time of flight question. So we're, it, we're focusing entirely on SY and not SX.
Does that make sense? Okay, your length is 3L and you're asked for the time. So what do you reckon guys? UT plus half AT squared? Okay. And then S equals what guys? U times T? Zeros. Half AT squared? So uh, it'd be 4.9 T squared and S is 3L so it'd be 3L divided by 4.9 so T equals the square root of 3L divided by 4.9 you can keep that in terms of G if you want do we have to keep it in terms of G? no it doesn't say it so we're good right done 30 marker in 10 minutes and that would leave you